Yes, so hello and welcome back to the channel today. What I thought would do to, on today's video is talk about some of the mistakes that I made as a beginner um, and some of, the, some of the things that I would change if I was starting photography today. So what we'll do is we'll go through all them points and I'll see you in a moment. The first thing I want to talk about, um, and the first mistake I probably made, and one of the biggest mis mistake, uh, biggest um, mistakes that I did in my photography when I started, was um, was my editing, and basically over or under editing. Um, I would start out with a point where I would be, you know, um, sometimes I would take an image. Uh, and edit, edit it to the point of, of oblivion uh, where I would, you know, over edit basically skies so they would be very dramatic, very HDI like. Um, um, I think HDI has a, a subject that um, is it's very, um, you know, it's a very marmite thing, it's, you either love it or hate it. Um, but I think there was a point a few years ago, and I was probably in the middle of that where. Um, a lot of images were getting massively over edited. You know, you'd have skies that were that were, you know, very unrealistic. You know, they were very, they were very contrasting, very high. Uh, you know, um, very, you know, rough edges and very contrasting images, uh, which I think at the time was a was a, was maybe a thing that was in, but. As a beginner, the one thing I was doing was I was massively over editing my images. Um, to, to a point where they would look unrealistic, they would look very dramatic, they would look very um, very cartoonish, so to speak. Uh, and I think if you want to um, open up your images to the widest audience, then it's best to make an image that's not massively over-edited on, you know, to one extreme or another, unless you're hunting for that type of um, viewership or images and then on the other hand there was situations where I was potentially under editing my video, uh, my images so I would get to a point where especially on editing on mobile phones where I would uh, basically apply a preset and then send it and then you know publish it on social media uh, and the problem with using presets is that one it it depends on the type of image so you could, it, a preset for one image could work great on, on that image but it could work awful on the other um, and I think applying a preset to every single image that you had um, can have a good effect and sometimes it can have a bad effect in the fact that you know sometimes you could apply a preset and your highlights would be massively blown out or you know, you would have two dark shadows, so you, you won't be able to see the detail in the shadows. So presets work sometimes, but don't. The one thing that I say to people is don't, don't, um, you know, always rely on the fact that presets are there. I think one of the things that presets do to us, it makes us um, a bit lazy with our editing, so to speak, in the fact that we just tend to take an image, apply a preset, send it off to social media. and. That you know, as I said, it could it could make one image look great, and then it could make the other image look uh, you know, absolutely dreadful. It could. So I think that editing should be very particular to one image and the image that you're dealing with at that time, and you should alter your your editing and your style of editing depending on what image you're doing. So my my first tip is to. Don't over edit and don't under under edit. Um, practice your editing. You know, um, do more and more editing. Edit as many images as you can. Um, you know, there might be some images that you've you thought that wasn't very good, but have a go at editing them. See if you can, you know, make a decent, make a good image out of them. You know, we we only get better at doing a certain thing when we practice and practice and practice. So the more you edit, the better you'll get at editing, and your images. Will, will will obviously improve on that and it's the one thing that I, I think I've really come the one thing I've really improved over the last probably 18 months two years is my editing has gone from 
I've started to take more time over my images, so I would literally, you know, um, gone from applying the preset and sending it off to actually spending, you know, maybe an hour on one image. You know, it literally can take that long. Um, I've been, you know, adjusting it in Lightroom, sending it to Photoshop, and editing it in Photoshop, and doing it in both fingers, and I've just been taking my time over, over images. And also, I have been in a situation where I've created an image and then maybe I've, I've walked away for an hour and come back to it and thought, hmm, that, that could be different, that could be something I could do differently. So, the one thing is I've not edited it in a rush, I've not edited it very quickly, um, I've not edited it using presets and I've just edited it in a way that, that fits that image. So take your time, edit slowly, learn and improve. The, the next tip that I want to speak about um, when I was starting out as, as a beginner photographer was not going out shooting enough. Um, I would get in a situation where, um, because I work a full-time job and I work five days a week, I could be a situation where literally I was only going to spend two hours on a Saturday afternoon going out shooting, coming home, editing my images, and then I wouldn't touch my camera for another week. Now, what I've started to do with um, my shooting at the moment is not only am I spending longer, but I've been going to more varied locations as well. I think varying your types and style of photography and your locations to where you visit can massively improve your imagery. Um, so what I've started to do is, is that when I've been going out, I've been going out early in the morning and staying out later. So spending a good, you know, eight to nine hours out shooting. And also I do, one of the things I've mentioned in my, in my previous videos is that I take my camera everywhere with me. So it's, it, 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 you know, my, my camera goes to work with me on a backpack. So literally if I'm sat waiting for a bus for an hour in the morning, I will pull out my camera. I will go out shooting around the urban area and see what I can capture. So photographer is very much like um, the same way that a footballer would treat their sport or maybe a, a rugby player would, you know, um, practice their goals. Um, or practice kicking a ball for a goal. It, it's basically, photography is about rinse and repeat, so shoot as much as you can, shoot everything, you know, shoot as much as you can, shoot, shoot everything that's possible. Um, you might come away with, um, you know, a few shots that are not the best shot in the world, but at least you'll be able to look at that shot, um, practice it, and, you know, try and repeat it next time. But what, what I say is, is go out shooting more, uh, but don't overshoot, if you understand what I mean. So don't go out, uh, go out shooting more, but don't try and capture every little thing in the area. So you might go to a shoot to one area, find one composition and work for it for a couple of hours. So, but the most important thing is actually getting out the door and going shooting. Um, if you're only shooting, say, one, once a week or once a month, everything that you're going to learn on that day, you're going to be, you're going to, you probably will have forgotten in a month. That's why, uh, as I said, a sportsman will spend maybe two hours kicking a ball at, at, at a goal. They'll keep repeating, kicking the ball at the goal, kicking it, kicking it all the time, till they get better, till they learn how to, you know, put the ball in the right place or you know maybe learn how uh, a goalkeeper moves on, on the on you know on the um, in the goals and photography is the, exactly the same thing so it's a case of going out shooting more but don't overshoot don't try to capture everything learn and work on one, one composition and you will improve So my next point I wanted to um, learn about when I um, when I started out as a beginner sort of relates to what I said in my last point was 
was the fact that I was trying to take too many images when out on a shoot. Um, if I was going out for a day's trip, um, say, to, to capture, um, you know, for example, Mary's shell in, uh, in, in Cleary's, which you may have seen one on, on one of my earlier videos, um, maybe two or three years ago, I would try and I would try to capture every angle and every composition and try to get as many photographs in as I can. Whereas now, if I go out for maybe eight or nine hours a day shooting, I may only come back with 20, you know, maybe uh, there's, there's days where I've come back with only one or two images. There are days where I've come back with 10, maybe 20. Um, two or three years ago, I would have probably come back with 500, 500 images. So one thing that I, I've, I have learned from uh, as a beginner is to slow down uh, and try to capture a small number of images but work on improving the number of images so what I said on my previous point was is to go out more shooting but don't think don't try to capture everything at a single time you can always go to a location and think oh well that, that that image over there would have been nice you can always revisit it you know at a later date so for me I've learned to slow down capture less images when I'm there and improve on them images that I've been taking. So there's nothing wrong with going out and shooting the same thing over and over, because it literally gets you, um, and it, it improves your way of taking that image. You can also learn about light and composition through doing the same thing, repeating it over and over. But you have to take the time to learn and to compose and to, actually work an image instead of trying to capture an image from 20 different locations or 20 different places um, 20 different angles depending on wh wh what you're shooting so take your time slow down spend more time working a composition and repeat so you learn and learn My final uh, point on this um, on, on this uh, video today is about um, going out and shooting with other people. Um, when I first started my photography, I would basically go out with my camera uh, and shoot alone. Shoot, uh, I would go and visit local locations on my own and take out and try to work the camera out on my own. And, what I've done over the last couple of years, I've started to go, go to more meetups, go out with more photographers, meet more people. And you'd be surprised at how much you learn from other people who are actually go out and take photographs every day. There is a um, thriving photography community out there on, on some of the social medias, but there's also some really good uh, meetup groups that go out. Um, there are, unfortunately, the one thing that happens with a lot of technical um, hobbies is you do tend to get the good and the bad. So there are some people out there who, who are quite opinionated and think you should do it a certain way, but the, the vast majority of people I've, I've experienced and um, found within the community have been very, very helpful and I, I've learned a lot from them. So go out and explore, go out and meet people, go out and visit, go to groups, you know. If you've got a local camera club that's good, go visit the camera club. Um, there's, a, there's, there's quite a reputation around camera clubs, um, especially in the photography community where some of them can be um, a little bit stuffy to say the least. But there are some really good camera clubs out there um, who you can go and visit and meet and there's some really knowledgeable people in there. Um, so go out, try different groups, try different communities, try different meetups, find, um, you know, find a body you can go out for, photographing with and you'll find that your photography will improve being with somebody that's uh, maybe a little bit more, more knowledgeable with you. Um, you know, they may have done more landscape photography than you've done or they may have done more portraiture photograph photography than you have. Um, whereas you might be able to, you know, you might have done more portraits of photography so you can pass your knowledge on to that other person so you can learn it from each other. Um, that's the one thing that I've really learnt from 
working and doing the job that I do is that you you you, you work um, you, you find knowledge from everybody from other people um, and you literally you know um, you pick up you can pick up tips and tricks and links and um, from other people and, and, and I've found that over the years you, you tend to learn more from actually seeing somebody do something rather than sit in a book or watch you you know sit, sit and read a book or read a magazine and um, I think that's why the the um, why YouTube has become such a good uh, big thing is that literally you can watch sit and watch a YouTube video like I'm doing now and maybe pick up a few tips and tricks from that video that you can take away for your your photography so if there's one thing I can say to you is go out and meet people and learn and you know find that find that um, you know find find that group that you you enjoy visiting uh, and you, you never know it might improve your photography in the way. That, this video today um, going through a few instant tips um, a few things that I got wrong as a beginner and a few things that I um, would like to pass on to you if you are a beginner photographer um, see if we can learn from each other um, and hopefully you found some tips and you know helpful hints from from this video so if you enjoyed um, what you watched today please don't forget to leave a comment below and tell me what you think uh, press that subscription button um, so you can watch any future videos from me. Uh, hit the bell icon if you um, want to be notified of any future videos from me. And hopefully I will um, see you again next time.